I've just finished the, finished the session and uh, it's probably one of the best sessions I've had in a long, long time. I can't remember the last time I could train without any worries, without any pains, strains. I could just push all my mind into the bar and, and just train. Uh, it's been fantastic. And I think all of this has come from that one comment, which led me into hip flexor overdrive, lots and lots of hip flexor training. Yesterday felt good, today I rested, so I came in rested from those, from those hip uh, flexor reps, came in, I'm feeling weaker, right? I'm feeling weaker because I'm fatigued with the core and flexors and all that stuff, but I'm feeling fantastic. There's a difference there. Sometimes you feel really, really strong. You come in here and you just literally can't push into the bar because something is feeling off, but your core, your go muscles are feeling strong, recovered. Today, I'm not feeling strong, but I'm feeling so healthy. The joints are feeling great. I can squat. Today I did, I worked up to 170 kilos for 10 doubles. Why that? I thought about 170 kilos for fives. Uh, last time I, last year, I, uh, I trained hip flexors really, really, you know, with that, with that focus. Uh, I started with 160, I think, sets of five, and I worked up to 190 for three sets of five over the course of like a month or something like that. I had a really good period. Today, I was like, mm, let, let's not push too early. Let's, let's recover. I've, I've been in a, in a cave of darkness feeling shit, feeling sorry for myself, feeling frustrated. So let's not jump the gun. Let's be patient here. So doubles, uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll show you on the video. Uh, I would hit a set and then I would do my hip flexes. So it was like a super set type thing. So I did 10 sets of 50 hip flexes and that was after doing the sets of squats. So fantastic session, feeling healthy. Uh, the one thing that I've noticed is that when I'm doing the marching, when I'm doing the hip flexor work, it's not just the, the hip flexors that I'm feeling. I'm feeling like, it's weird, man. I'm feeling like lower back. It's not even lower back erectors. It's kind of like the QL or something. I don't know. And I'm also feeling the glutes. Uh, so like the whole agonist-antagonist relationship with simply raising a knee up uh, obviously, we know what the agonists are, the prime movers are, the hip flexors, you know, the iliacus, the psoas, all that stuff, rectus femoris. Uh, but then the muscles on the other side need to relax, and they're also going through some sort of contractions uh, as an antagonist, and there's a whole bunch of them. So, simply just going through the motions of hip flexion, hip extension, hip flexion, it's not really hip extension, but it's just, I'm extending from a flex position. It's just literally pouring oil into that joint and it feels so freaking amazing, man. Absolutely amazing. So it allowed me to put all this work in. Um, that's it. That's really all I have to say. I am so content right now, so happy that I could get through so much work. You know, for, for the longest time, I, I've always felt like this for the longest time. I know what, it, what what's required to get strong. I know you need to have progression. I know you need to, you know, manipulate the sets and reps. I, I know you need to kind of show yourself, prove yourself to yourself that you're getting stronger. So if you increase your five rep max, 10 rep max, if you increase the volume, you're getting stronger. The trouble with me for the longest time is that I've always tippy-toed around these things because I always knew if I do too much, I'm gonna end up hurt. And so then you go into this like minimalism type of approach where you are trying to stimulate, trying to elicit that response from the body, but the margins between that threshold of, you know, we have enough stimuli to pain was so freaking narrow that I'll just, it's just a nightmare. Uh, so for basically the entire journey of, of this channel, I've been on a, on, a, on, a, on a mission to find something that's gonna complement the squats and allow me to put the work in in the squats uh, and not be hurt. Seems like this is it. And, and, you know, straight away I'm frustrated at the thought because I've been through this very same cascade of thoughts about hip flexors, hip flexors, hip flexors. Uh, it's kind of like walking around the same damn block over and over again, seeing the same damn stone on, on the road. And you're like, damn, that's a stone, that's a stone. 
and you keep tripping over it. You keep tripping over it. You keep tripping over it. The trouble is, is that, you know, what's that saying, man? Some people trip over the truth and they still can't see it. It, it, it. You know, because the first time you trip over it, you're like, oh, okay, well, that's that's a positive effect. But I wonder what's going on here. I remember that the last thought that I had when I did this hip flexor stuff, I remember feeling the benefits and I remember going, hmm. So when I'm doing this marching business, when I'm doing the leg raises, the single leg raises, every which way, lying down, seated, all sorts of stuff. What's really going on here? And I remember thinking to myself after a session similar to this, doing lots and lots of marching, standing, I thought to myself, is it the hip flexor that's giving me this benefit? Or is it simply me standing on one leg and the glute medius on the standing leg getting worked and that's the benefit? That's the benefit of this whole thing. So now I remember thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to, let's target the glute medius. And that's when I started doing the pistol squats. I don't know if you guys recall doing that and lunges. And I started going down that path. And then as soon as I stopped doing the marching, there was decay of those effects that the marching provided and carried me maybe a month or something like this. And I'm doing the Bulgarian split squats and, and walking lunges. And I'm doing the pistol squats. I'm doing all of that sort of stuff. But I, I, I slowly started getting worse and worse and worse. And I was like, damn, what's going on? But I never made the connection that it's not the glute medius, it's the damn hip flexor. That was the whole story all along. But I made the wrong hypothesis, thinking that here is a motion, here is an exercise. Okay, it's a very complex exercise, lots of different things going on. Let's try and dissect it a little bit. And I made the wrong dissection, I made the wrong theory, thinking that it was something else, whether, where, you know, when it was the whole time, the hip flexors. I mean, to this to this day, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the hip flexor, the, the marching. Yes, I feel the side glute as I'm walking, as, as I'm marching. I feel the side glute, but also feel the hip flexors. Maybe it's not the hip flexor, which I'm heavily, heavily convinced it is. But maybe there's also a benefit coming from the glute medius being worked purely because it's a unilateral exercise. It's a unilateral exercise that we are going through hip flexion. You know, and I need to stop with this obsession of, you know, dissecting the damn thing up down to a molecule. Okay, it is that fiber. This shit doesn't exist like that. In, in most systems, you're not going to find one sole reason for the existence of the whole system. It's a, it's a synergy of a whole bunch of things. Who cares if it's the medius, the glute medius, or if it's the hip flexor? Maybe it's both of them. Maybe it's neither of them independently. Maybe it's the motion which is produced when you are doing the marching. It's the synergy between the two. Who knows? But there's an obsession with me to try and isolate the damn thing to, to, to one wire in the circuit. Okay, this is the reason. This, this wire here is the reason why this whole freaking roller door has stopped working. It actually has stopped working. And I'm freaking trying to work it out. Please need to get somebody professional to do it. But that's a story for another day. You know, what's, what's going on with this thing? Um, I've, 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 I don't know. You know, it, it kind of drives me to kind of search for it and even now like after doing the 10 sets feeling great feeling very very much trained which is something that i don't feel like after training sessions which is weird right you go through all this stuff the training and you you know you, you feel tired but you don't feel trained like you feel like you've just done things but you haven't trained there's a difference between exercise and training I, you guys have to um uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys understand that but a, a lot of guys don't understand the difference between exercise and training you know one training is planned destination like we are trying to make these adaptations so we can do that i want to do that you know exercise is like i just want to get tired I'll run up a hill up and down a couple of times and you're tired you know it mimics training effect but you're not actually training for a desired goal so there's a difference and so for a lot of time i've been you know working hard without the ability to actually train for what I need because of the pains and freaking prehab, rehab shit that has been going on with me for such a long time. But anyway, whatever, it's not lost time because I've learned a whole bunch of things and I've learned a lot about myself and about the anatomy and about how everything flows and works and synergizes with each other and all that stuff. So, you know, the, the, the bottom line is never stop. I'm never going to stop. I'm never going to stop rocking up. You keep rocking up and one day it's going to be a sunny day. One day it's going to freaking be a sunny day, man. You just have to wait for that shit. You know, God is going to decide when it's going to be your day, man. And, and, you know, leading up to that day, you just got to keep rocking up. And that's it. That's how I view it. Whether you're religious or not, whatever, it doesn't really matter. 
what your belief systems are, but you need to understand that keep walking on the rainy days, on the snowy, shitty, windy days, you keep walking. You don't stop and cry like a child because, you know, it's unfair. What do you know about fair? Keep going, even if it's shit, even if it's empty barbell. And I've had many days like that when it's an empty freaking barbell, but you keep rocking up. And eventually something happens, man. You know, I don't even know why that guy commented what he commented, but he, he felt some energy within him to comment. And many guys have commented in the past. Many freaking guys have commented in the past. And I haven't had that effect. Um, which leads me to another freaking point. And this video is going to be long ass, but I don't care. I have lots to say like usual. There's another comment that popped up. And my God, did that get me thinking again. You guys have been on fire, man. I've had, I don't know what the hell is going on with me, but I'm resonating with you guys a lot in, in recent times. This comment, I don't even have the freaking phone with me. My missus's phone is in the house, but um, actually here, let, let me stop this here and I'll get back to when I get the phone. I want to read it. All right, so I've got the phone here. Let me um, find the comment. Let me pause this video. Go down. Give me a second. I want, I want to find it. Uh, where are we? It was about the shoes. Um, aha, uh -huh, here we go. This is the comment. It's from uh, Yoshia Incarnate 1649. So thank you. If you're, if you're watching this, thank you for commenting this. I'm not sure if you're going to be back to this video, but he writes, it's not that the shoes or your body are unnatural. It's the walking on hard, flat terrain. hundred percent of the time is unnatural. Pre-civilization, AKA 99% of human existence. We would walk, we would walk on uneven mixed terrain. I'm not sure if what the solution is other than packing it all in and living in a cave somewhere. But I've thought for a while it would be nice if Vivo, uh, the, the maker of the shoes that, that I wear, uh, made some uh, that were still zero drop and wide, but had a few more millimeters of cushioning to counteract the hard uh, concrete we find ourselves walking uh, on in urban environments. So that got me really thinking because I remember when I had when I had the uh, the Converse, they were really narrow, toes crunched up, softer. Uh, and I thought, man, what if I wear something that is liberating, kind of like sandals, right? Kind of like, you know, thongs, where your 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 toes are, can go wherever they want. So I got these Vivo uh, bare shoes, and they're great. You know, wear them to work, wear them to training, wear them all the time. I don't really wear normal shoes. Like once you get used to that freedom, it's very hard to go back. But then he commented, and for the whole time I was like, yeah, it's natural, it's natural, natural. And then it occurred to me after after he, he wrote, he's spot on. He's spot on. Is it natural for us to walk on concrete all the time? Is it natural to be walking on concrete all the time? If I'm not on concrete, I'm on tiles. If I'm not on tiles, I'm on concrete over there. So the constant hard surfaces and wearing bare, sh bare shoes, bare, bare feet or you know minimalistic type shoes, how natural is natural? And it gets me the whole situation of it, it, it challenges the, the, the whole, oh, I don't I want to wear flat shoes. I want to wear, I don't want to wear heels. I don't want to wear supportive shoes and all of that. But I, I'm being really challenged here with the thoughts of nothing is freaking natural. Nothing is freaking natural. And, uh, you know, my, my cameraman, you know, he, he messaged me the other day and he was like, after yesterday's you know, the, the video, so two days ago, uh, when I was you know questioning the shoes, and he basically went along the lines of to say, is it natural to have 200 kilos on your back and then squatting it? Is that natural? Like, what does the word natural mean? Have we been squatting ATG with 200 kilos on our backs? That's not natural. And he's got a point. And so my, my mindset of the thing is natural because we were born without shoes. So we were supposed to be walking without shoes. But like the guy said, 99% of our human existence, we didn't have concrete. 
So our evolution, we didn't, we didn't evolve for the concrete. We evolved for grassy plains and uneven surfaces and dirt and whatever. And so I'm thinking that I'm living in a cave. So, you know, I'm preparing for, for the cave, yet I'm being plucked into the 21st century concrete jungle with 200 kilos on my back, ATG. So there's no consistency there with my thoughts. And it, it really challenged me, you know, both the cameraman and, and, and now this fella, you know, confirming some of the beliefs that the cameraman was, was, uh, was, was talking about. Like, what, like what, when you say it's like, what are you talking about? And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I don't, I don't know what to think anymore. Like, uh, I've basically done one year of wearing the, the Vivo Bear shoes. And they're comfortable. They're great. Uh, but I'm wondering whether they're beating the hell out of the my feet because I'm always on concrete. Um, you know, there's, there's benefits to the Vivo Barefoot shoes, like the whole wide toe. I don't care where you're walking, you, your toes should be free. It's just the cushioning. On, it's basically not existent on those shoes. Like, I'm literally walking on bare feet on concrete. And so I wonder what that, you know, what, what the effects are to my feet if I continuously do that. I don't know. I mean, right now, as I'm feeling, I feel like the two stories that I was comparing before, is it the ankle, weak calf complex, or is it the hip? Right now, I'm completely on the, on the hip side. I've implemented, I've treated the hip, and I've had basically instant relief from the troubles that I've had. Now, I don't know whether that's translated to my feet feeling better, but me as a system is feeling better purely for what I've done with the hips. Um, so, you know, there's that. But it's an interesting idea. It's an interesting concept. It's an interesting challenge to my own psyche thinking that, why am I so hot about these flat shoes, man? You know, because I, I like the whole minimalism. I don't like a belt. I don't like shoes. You know, I don't like a lot of these things. And I'm like, I'm sitting here. I'm like, why is that? Oh, because it's natural. I want to be fully like God intended, right? Fully how we're supposed to be. Make it, um, it's kind of most exciting to me to see somebody squat with minimal shoes, ATG, high bar. That, that thing to me is sexy as hell without a belt. It's really, really it's sexy and appealing. And that's what I want to train for. Uh... And I'm like, well, it's still appealing to me, but I'm wondering, is it appealing to me because it's fully natural? Well, it's not natural. You know, right now we're talking about, we're not going back to zero. If you're thinking about the scale of, you know, really, really enhanced and, on, and supported accessories. So let's say that's a 10. You know, I was thinking that zero is natural, fully, you know, without any accessories. Well, I'm thinking if you go fully without anything, you're probably a negative 10 because you're not living in a cave. You're living in a concrete jungle. So maybe to get back to zero, me putting on all these shoes will probably re put me into that pseudo zero. Whereas if I just have nothing and go completely bare feet with all of these other things that I've said, high bar, ATG, no belt, bare feet on concrete, I'm basically negative 10 in terms of that whole natural scale. I've taken it too extreme because I'm not in a cave and I'm not in a glassy, a glassy plane and I'm not supposed to be squatting ATG with 200. Anyway. I thought that was interesting and uh, it's kind of had me thinking throughout today's session what that actually means. Uh, you know, it's making me reassess the whole Oli shoes. Should I be putting those on? And I know they have Oli shoes now that have the wide toe box. So that's something that's appealing to me. I know Remolo 2s, a lot of people love them. That's the only shoes I've ever had in terms of the heel shoes. Uh, anyway, that's something else that I'm kind of dealing with in the background. I don't know what to think about that anymore, but... Um, Maybe the natural setup that I once thought is not so natural. I'm handicapping myself more than I should be. Anyway, appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.